Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all, and today we're going to have ourselves a little bit of fun. We're going to get up close and personal with the latest and greatest from the company called Tsunami, which if you're not in the Northeast, you may not be familiar with. They've been around for a little while now, and they launched a reel about a year ago called the Tsunami Shield. It was a $100 reel. It was fully sealed, quite possibly the most rugged $99 reel made in the last 20 years besides the, the, the venerable Pen Z, and they followed it up with a new line of reels called Evict, which start at around 140 bucks and go all the way up to about 180. And the main selling point behind these reels are the fact they have a stainless steel pinion and a stainless steel main gear. And it's with all that being said, let's uh, stop wasting time and uh, crack the boxes. This is a 5,000 size. This is the largest in the lineup. And they come in a plastic bag, okay. And I'm not going to go over everything on the side of the box. I'm just going to put a splash screen up just to give you an idea. You know, 5,000, 7-1 ball bearings or sealed ball bearings. Max drag, 30 pounds on the 5K, 5.6 to 1 gear ratio, 17.7 ounces. We'll get accurate weights. I'll put some little overlays for that. What I want to do is just get them all out of the box to start. It's a nice looking reel. I mean, for real. I mean, it, it, looks, it looks good. I mean, you're, you're seeing them for the first time that I'm seeing them, so that's cool. Beautiful looking reel. All right, so we're going to grab the 4,000. Oh, okay. So the 4,000 has a second knob. So the 5,000 just comes with the metal aluminum knob. The 4,000 has the option for both. I like that. That's pretty cool. I'm not going to spin them up yet. I'm just going to unbox them. This is the 3000. I do like that they have the uh, handle knobs bubble wrapped. Does this one have that second knob too? Yes, it does. So far, it looks like the only ones that don't have the rubber band flying, the uh, foam knob is the largest. And this is the... 2000. I'm curious what this one looks like because 2000 is a fairly small size, you know, when you compare it to the others. What is it stuck on? Okay. And the smallest of the bunch does not come with an EVA knob. Oh, it does. It fell out. So the, all sizes except for the 5K come with the second knob. This is the 2000. I'm going to turn the handle on it. Not bad. I, I'm kind of surprised. It feels pretty good. Rock solid anti reverse. Although, I'll clip up the mic. When I go to stop it, you're going to hear a little bit of a tink. That tink, that little metallic-y sound, that is reminiscent of some reels that I've seen in the past where it used kind of a, a low-grade AR clutch. This is a 3000. I'm going to go to the 4000 and get clipping it on up just to give you an, an idea of how they sound and what they feel like. I hear something at the top and bottom of the oscillation stroke. It's not like a clunk, it's like a like a suction sound. You'll hear it. My guess is that there might be a seal at the main shaft. I, I think there are seals. I don't know where they are. We're going to find out together. That feels real nice. You can get a, a true sense of what I feel when I'm cranking this reel. Is 
this is a fairly large reel. Um, feels heavier than 17, 18 ounces. It, it does, but I, I don't know. It could be wrong. I'm just putting it out there. I'll get accurate measurements, post them up there right now. So, what do we think about these reels? Well, let's do a little... I dig the handle knob. I do. I mean, some aluminum knobs are kind of hokey. These, I, I like the shape of them. Seven ball bearings. We're assuming that there's ball bearings in here by the way they're spinning. The smallest one. Pretty strong bail trip mechanism takes a bit to kick it over which is what you want if you uh, if you're afraid of premature uh, bail trip like you make a cast and you, know, you end up casting your your your, your pencil popper 290 yards because you know you snapped it off because the bail shut on you but just a little tip for you guys that have issues with premature bail trip when you open up the bail just give it a rotation to where it catches on the ramp then it takes much more effort since you don't have any momentum to get it to trip. You should be, you know, closing your bail by hand manually anyway. And, uh, you know, that's not what that is for. But when you go, if you have a herky-jerky casting stroke, as long as you rotate that bail to the point where it rests up against that trip ramp, it's going to take a lot more uh, to get it to kick over. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, that's... Um... Okay. I, I could see the screw moving around in there. See that screw moving? Um, just give me a second. Let's see. Hopefully, we're, we're going to see if we can back the screw out just a little bit. I just want to make sure it's not, like, bound up. So if I go to tighten it... No, it's pretty loose. I, I don't want to strip anything out so we're going to kind of tighten it nine tenths of the way that actually made a difference we're going to go ahead now and, and tighten it up all the way actually you want to know something we're going to be tearing these reels down so might as well start with the biggest one since i already had the screwdriver out on it and uh i gotta say this drag knob here really nice very nice and chunky it feels like it's a metal drag knob and there's no gaps in the middle and what i mean by that this might be just me whining, but this is an $800 Daiwa Saltiga. It's a very similar color scheme, if you look at it. You see that drag knob? You see that the notch right in the top there? Right there. When you close the bale, if there's any loose coil, even if you're manually closing the bale and pre-tensioning it, I've had issues where it would catch on that damn notch. And if you look at the other reels, here's a 4,000 sized Daiwa BG, and you can see there is no notch in that drag star. And if you look at the 6,000 ballistic, it's back again, but it's a little less line catchy. So <laughs> I, I, I wish it wasn't there in the first place. But uh, if you take the 4,000 sized Daiwa BG, which is one of the most popular reels on the market, and the most and uh, 4500 sized spin fisher and we'll just do a little side by side comparisons just to give you an idea where they fall in terms of size so this is the smallest two this is a 3000 that's the 2000 looks to be very i don't know they are look they look to be a little bit different i could tell the butt caps a little bit different in uh, different in size and uh, here's the 4000 the 4000 is actually smaller than the BG 4000 to give you an idea of scale. It's more along the lines of the 4500, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I think that's about right. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> and the 5000, do I have a Saragossa line around? Saragossa going once, going twice. No. That's a cast king. That's a pen. 
That's a yeah, well, that's a Saragossa. Okay. So this is a six thousand size Saragossa SW. Tick smaller than the five thousand Evict. Make sure this is down all the way. Yeah, it looks to be a little bit smaller. Just a little bit. Could be in the same class. But it looks to be a little bit larger than the 4000. For those of you who keep it in score. All right, so let's go ahead now and take a look at what makes these reels tick. So we have we assume a screw on handle <laughs> i've been tight enough to screw it looks like a like a pen battle two type handle uh and there's a rubber seal here you can see that rubber seal all right so we got screw here screw here screw here what's what's going on underneath the drag knob Standard, you have the shims, which the spool runs on. Looks to be another seal here at the main shaft. And seal right there. Cool. And I think these are carbon fiber drags. So let's see. Yep, carbon fiber, heavily greased drag stack with... Looks to be one year to middle washer. Probably capable of putting out you know, 15, 20 pounds of drag. It says 30. Minimal, you know, empty empty spool, probably put out close to that. We're not gonna test it. I'm not here to test max drags because that will likely cause damage. I'm gonna leave that spring there. All right, so let's see. What makes this real tick? Counterbalance weight located there. Okay. I'm going to remove that screw first since we're right here anyway. I'm going to go to this one here. Can't tell if that's going into graphite yet. Looks like fine threads on that screw so it might be going into metal this screw is very loose didn't have to crack it at all just started backing out and Okay, this that screw was going into plastic. All right, now this kind of this this kind of hinged as I was pulling it out. It kind of hinged down there. You can see, kind of L shape, kind of hooks into that piece. Oh man, okay. Uh, we're gonna file this with a head scratcher and really. <laughs> you put seals at the handle connection point with seal ball bearings, a seal up top here at the main shaft, and we're going to take a look here real quick. Very plasticky kind of cover, sealed ball bearing up inside there. I'm assuming that's what the blue is. And there's an O-ring in here. So you have seals to keep water out from getting in here, here, and here. Yet, I used very little pressure to remove a very small screw, which was holding a very flimsy piece of plastic that has no gasketed or, you know, boot around the perimeter. And it's being held on just like that. There's nothing to keep it really in place. There's no pressure putting it anywhere. And so water can definitely get in there. And we're not going to say sand, but water and, you know, and salt has salt deposit when it dries. 
And can you see the oscillation of the drive? I, I can see the mechanism that moves the, oh, there's the oscillation slider. Oh, 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 somebody needs a bath. There is some serious amount of sand in there. I think that's sand. Oh, yeah. Or no, it's salt. Making an appearance. So, not a beach reel. I think you guys are all agree with that. Next, this click plate for the drag star comes right off. Easy peasy. Okay. Reverse threaded. Pretty beefy main shaft. There's your lip seal for the main shaft. There looks to be a nylon bushing that the main shaft rides on to lessen friction when there's a load being put on it. That's why that way it's not rubbing on the stainless uh, pinion. It runs on that nylon bushing. There's an arrow. I'm gonna follow the directions. Okay. That was cool. I guess. <laughs> okay, so we have kind of a rubbery material here uh, that I'm assuming X as a little barrier for water and a rotor brake. So that way it's not flying freely. Yeah, just kind of clicks in. Doesn't appear to be any sort of sealing at this area here. There's a seal ball bearing and a bushing right here. And uh, let's remove these two screws down here. I, I gotta say, I was liking what I was seeing up until this this ass end here. I mean, why leave it exposed like that? Where they, I mean, you, you you saw the oscillation slider go all the way down. Now, if they were to make this all one piece and close this off, you would have to have a bigger body. So maybe they were trying to go for some weight savings and make it more compact. That's just an assumption. I don't know. But that's a that's a pretty uh, glaring weakness. I hate to put it out later like that, but yeah, that that is a weakness. There's no doubt about it. Feels like it's not made out of metal. It's not. Okay, so the side plate, um, we'll call this the side plate, we'll call this the body, uh, is graphite. Graphite reinforced plastic. Or extreme Philly fishing, as you would say, in rainforest graphite. The rainforest <laughs> graphite. Can we pull the main gear without doing anything else? Is that a possibility? I like reels like that. Not many do, and this one is one of them that you can. Sweet. Oh, oh no. Hmm. Okay, so this is what I'm kind of looking at, just to give you an idea of what I'm what I'm thinking here. 
whatever that's worth. So you have this rotor brake that acts as a little bit of a gasket when this piece is kind of clipped down on top, which water can easily get in through this top section here. It's, it's, it's not a seal, it's just a, if water happens to splash up against the side of it, it'll, it'll because it's plastic and a solid piece of plastic at that, it'll keep water from passing through it like cheesecloth. But the water is going to run down into this area here. And then there's nothing really keeping water out. Again, we're talking salt water, guys. It has a fairly robust main gear. That's a beast. Big teeth. I mean, it was smooth out of the box. Now, usually with stainless steel gears, usually there's some running period to get, to get them all nice and smooth. These feel good out of the box. There's some shims on that main gear. $180. I, I would have liked to see a little bit better considering that they're $99 reel with the, you know, the cast zinc had full seals all over the place. And I'm curious if this is a, a unique design to them. Like, is this a from scratch reel? That, that I honestly, I honestly don't know. It could be. They are the same. All right, let's look at a pop a couple screws in real quick just to get a button back up. And then I'm going to take a look at the anti reverse clutch mechanism. This is a fairly, uh, sturdy housing for the clutch. I like seeing that. It's all fully housed in the frame. Three screws to hold the top pinion support bearing down. It's a design that's been used for thousands of different reels. And it works. There's no anti-reverse uh, on-off switch. And it looks like the design isn't just a... Uh, originally had it and they had to put something in there to cover it which is good to see. Nice pinion, lots of grease in this area to protect from corrosion and possibly keep water from getting in. Uh, lots of deep cuts on the pinion itself and looks to be a heavily greased and reverse clutch bearing. And the design we see here is very similar to what you see in a pen reel. Very, very similar. Come on. Fairly standard Lego part for the clutch. It's not a premium clutch like you can find in some reels. But again, not many put a very high-end piece there under $400. So we can't really take any points off there. And we're not looking to. I'm going to pop this back together and move on to, we'll go to the smallest size, how's that? All right, now. Take a look at the smallest in the lineup, right? This is the 2000. Sounds like a nice duck call. Same deal with the seal at the top. Just 
take a look. Okay, so we have a little bit of a different design style. On the largest, there is a screw here. And I'm looking at this one here in the distance, same thing, no screw there. And no screw on the 4000 either. So there's one of two things that it could be, three things actually. Uh, the worst being it's snapped into place. You never want to see that. Um, there could be uh, a leg that goes up that's in between two side plates and the screw kind of traps it. That'll work. It's used. Sometimes there's a screw that goes down, but there was no visible screw there, so it's not included. Or on the inside, there could be a little plug, what Shimano does in some of their super high-end reels. You actually have to remove the rotor, remove the plug, and then get the screw driver head down into the body to release the screw down here, which gets kind of pushed up and compresses that rash guard. Um, we don't know yet, but we're going to go here and unscrew this this one was uh, tighter than the other reel the other reel uh, I didn't have to crack it at all it was almost kind of loosened up to begin with and then you have this screw here yeah I felt it loosen all right See, it loosened. Now, how do you get this bugger to budge? Simple, just yank it off. <laughs> oh, man. I don't like that, guys. I really don't. Especially since there's nothing at all whatsoever in this area to seal it off. And there's... Not, nothing in this area that's pushing this up to, to compress anything. And this plastic is, it's, it's not that nice plastic, I'll, to put it the, the most, the best way I can describe it. This plastic feels like the, the plastic that you, you don't like. Like the, you know, the little toys you get out of the bubblegum jars and little eggs. That's, that's the kind of quality plastic feel that has to it. Again, $140 reel. You're now in Daiwa's wheelhouse. You're now in Shimano's wheelhouse. You're now in everywhere. You're competing now. You're coming with a, with a giant bazooka with stainless steel gears, which you can get in the Tycoon Fenor reel. The, what is it? The Lethal or the Primal? One of those, those reels? Same thing, reverse threaded. Same thing, it has that little bushing that runs on the main shaft. And this is a little, di little bit different. So you have two, two screws for this cap here. Doesn't look to have a rotor brake at all. The trip ramp is built into the frame. It's not removable. So if you want a manual barrel, you have to modify the trip lever. So if I open that up, see that little leg that comes up? You'd have to modify that. You don't have to do anything. From what I understand, this reel was designed to be fished off of a Boat. And they want this reel to be used for bottom fishing where you're straight cranking blackfish off the bottom, flounder off the bottom, black sea bass off the bottom, repeatedly winching in, you know, heavy lead. So it's not uncommon that people that bottom fish and any kind of depth, depending on current, will drop down, you know, 14, 16, 18, 24, three pounds of lead to get down 60, 70, 80 feet and keep it down there. Um, I'm not a big time bottom fisherman. That's not what I generally prefer to do, but that's not to say that I haven't spent a couple hundred hours doing it. And short stroke and a, <laughs> a two pound lead weight to the boat is not 
not what you're going to be doing. You're just going to just straight crank it back up. So that's, from what I understand, the purpose behind this reel. Now, would I like to see a little bit better sealing at the ass end of the reel? Absolutely, positively. Would I like to see a little bit more attention to detail put here to seal off this clutch? Because I have a feeling, yep, we're not going to find any real sealing other than a uh, marginally effective rubber sealed ball bearing here and we have that again very similar clutch design to what you would get in like an old Fluger. Um, let's take this spring out. Not much tension put on that. The only thing it was doing, ah here we go. If you heard me to say before that the larger reel, the 5000, had a good clutch design where it was you know, inset into the frame. There was no evidence of there being a, an on-off switch in the design. This is not the case. So, yeah. See this little light gray piece? This is a soft rubber. I can press it. There's a little dimple here. This is for another reel, maybe in a lower series, maybe from another company under a different name, where they had a on-off and reverse switch. So you can back reel. And a saltwater reel, not you know, in any kind of reel, you really need it. Um, so this has it, but it has a way of keeping water out there, which is nice to see that they did that. And it's not just like a plastic door. Okay, we're going to be careful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, when I saw this design... I immediately thought back to pay, uh, Fluger and a design that I've seen on some very cheap reels. I, I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's part, you know, inset into the frame, but I've seen it before. And the clutch housing here, this shiny metal piece, uh, doesn't want to come out with the actual clutch in the cylinder uh, at, in one unit. So... I can, I can, oh, there it is. It's kind of moving. But uh, I can see the springs that make this up. It's all one piece. It's, it's white plastic. There might even be a two-piece plastic top section with the needle bearings. And this, the, the place that the needle bearings are running on is just, you know, your nylon or your acetyl plastic, um, which is fine. And it's plastic springs. So the only thing that can fall out is the, uh, the cylinders. So I'm not going to have to worry about tracking down springs if I do drop stuff and they do get all, all over the place. And we're going to hold it like this for a moment. Yeah, okay. Another thing to watch out for, uh, this is the clutch housing. It's larger than the pinion support bearing. So if you do service your own reel, uh, you, you, if you pull it out, right side up you're going to drop those cylinders and uh they're they're pretty friendly they're not popping out all over the place to be honest usually that's a pain in the arse um you will have to make sure you get it situated back to uh proper orientation to fit into here and not have this uh too close or too far so it comes out that gap here all right so i'm going to put this out of the way we don't want to have any mistakes What am I missing? Boom. Some of these reels, when you've never come across them before, they're time bombs. But if you've been in enough different reels, you kind of recognize certain things. So off the bat, I've seen this uh, caged bearing at the top. I know that they're sticky, so I made sure I got a really firm grip and I was using my shoulders to pull it up because I didn't want it to pop out and explode. But I knew that clutch had the potential to stay in there because I've seen that on different designs in the past. Hashtag fishing real rain man. Okay, so we have what looks to be blue grease. Hmm, super easy. Barely an inconvenience. God. 
Now, I just, I just gotta say, Josh from J&H has me hooked on that guy that does the, uh, from Screen Rants, he does the pitch meetings for all the, the movies where the two guys argue back and forth or talk about, you know, plots for movies. <laughs> you guys gotta check that out. Super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Stainless steel main gear and a tiny little reel. I ain't gonna lie, that's cool to see. You don't see that very often. That's unique in 2019 anyway, 2018. And it looks like we have graphite for the side plate, metal for the body. So that looks to be pretty consistent. We just we established before it had the same seals. So man, I'm gonna stop with the tear down bits and pieces. I mean, we have it all sitting right here in front of us. <laughs> of course. I, I had I had to. I, I just, I, I, I had to move this. So now I gotta play uh, with this clutch to get it back in there. Um, all right, so where does this reel come in? Um, Tsunami makes some decent stuff. Some of the rods have caught a ton of fish. A lot of guys love their rods. Um, the reels, the Tsunami Shield at $99, considering it was a an adjusted-to-spec OEM'd reel, which everybody's guilty of. You know, look at Abu Garcia. Uh, look at Daiwa with their new you know, $99 and under baitcasters. Um, was extraordinarily successful if you were to take a saltwater reel that a no-name company came out with and compared the sales numbers versus how many had defects i don't think there's ever been in the history of fishing reels a reel that was as successful as that tsunami shield at 99 dollars um guys were using it on the beaches which there's no environment worse for a fishing reel than powdery sandy beach saltwater wind sea foam striped bass, bluefish, uh, jack crevals, you know, all that kind of stuff that will destroy a reel in short order. And from what I heard through people who did have issues with their, with the reels, Tsunami took care of them, uh, lickety split. And I'm not here to promote products. If you guys haven't figured that out by now, you know, I'll, I'll point out, point out shortcomings and hammer companies, but I always keep it in the realm of what I see in front of me, my personal firsthand experiences, and what I've experienced out on the water. So looking at this reel, its design, seeing what I've seen in some of the advertisements and some of the marketing for this being a dedicated bottom fishing spinning reel, um, I, I think it'll work well for that. I don't think that you'll have an issue. It, and for a stainless steel gear set to be as smooth as it, as it is out of the box at any price range uh, is, is pretty impressive. Since it's a standard, you know, pinion and main gear, it's not like the old style Pen Z's, uh, where it was like a worm and wheel kind of design. Um, yeah, why not? I mean, the clutch isn't all that great, but you're not finding super duper clutches in many reels under four hundred dollars anyway. And as long as it holds up, it's a heavily greased clutch. Um, in the cold, well, I'll put one of these in the fridge uh, just to do a test to see if the clutch holds. Sometimes heavily greased reels in the cold will fail, whereas in room temperature, they're perfectly fine. They, they, they function normally. So I'll take the 3,000, stick it in the fridge, and uh, I'll put that at the end of the video to see if it worked or not. And, uh, yeah, I, I, for, for 140 to 180 bucks, you have a pen spin fisher that has seals all over the place. It has a machined aluminum gear. Um, the gear differences, that's, there is no material better for gears, really, than some form of steel. Uh, brass is like a marshmallow in comparison, really, honestly, come on. You know, same thing with aluminum. Um, you look at all the big offshore reels, they're mostly using stainless steel gears, or, you know, steel of some sort, some variety. Um, you have the graphite side plate with stainless steel gears, which probably is part of the reason why you don't feel that, that burr and that buzz and that whir, um, 
there is a little bit of give in here with the super hard gears that might actually help having that, that graphite side plate. But you can't fault them for that because Shimano has graphite side plates on pretty much every reel that they make. You know, outside of their $800 reels. So, the looks of it, killer. I like the drag knob, carbon fiber drag stack. You know, it's a standard drag. It, it, it doesn't matter anything. It's just got one eared metal washer. It's a carbon fiber drag stack. It's going to put out enough pressure and it's going to be smooth because they're paper carbon fiber washers. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, flattening out, you know, felt washers over time. So, for me personally and how I fish, I wouldn't buy it. It wouldn't be real for me. For you guys, if you guys are spending time on the boat and you're not hitting it with, you know, hoses every every day or two, you know, after your trip and you're just, you're wiping it down with a rag and you're not hitting with a garden hose under high pressure, you're not going to have to worry about water getting up inside. They seem to be fairly well greased. Everything's robust about them. Nice handle knob. I like the, the option for the foam knob because a lot of times when you're using a two, three, or 4,000 size reel, it's 50 degrees or under. Sometimes grabbing these, these cold knobs in the winter time, it's nice to have the foam as an option. And uh, for that, it's not a bad reel. I just wouldn't bring this on the beach. Or I wouldn't wade the flats with this in salt. I wouldn't. There's better options for that. And... Uh, Okie dokie. I think uh, it's with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and stick that in the fridge, find out, and uh, yeah. All right, so if you uh, can't tell that uh, this has been in the freezer for a little bit, I actually started in the fridge and said, screw it, let's go uh, full hog and stuck this jammer in the freezer. You can see that uh, there's some frozen condensation on there. It's a little bit stiff, not bad. And the, oh, the clutch slipped just a little bit. Just once? Is that all we're going to have it do? Yeah. One little clutch slip. That's just a handle. Cool. That answers my question. And again, a lot of times if you have a heavily greased and I reverse clutch, when it's warm, the cylinder is able to move around freely, but once it gets super cold, that grease kind of gets a little bit thicker and stiffer. The cylinders can't move around within that clutch housing and bite when they kind of back into the little chambers that force them against the, the clutch sleeve. So that's a good sign. No issue there. One of my concerns, super easy, barely an inconvenience, just a cold reel on a cold day when you're bottom fishing in the middle of November, December, and January for your blackfish. Alrighty, I think that about sums it up. I appreciate everybody for coming out and checking this video out. Uh, I, I gotta say thank you to my buddy Braden who uh, called me up. He's like, hey, I got some, I got some reels for you. He actually said crack. Um, <laughs> uh, for the past couple of years, one of my buddies uh, has uh, supplied me with many reels. Uh, he works at a shop, he, and 99.9% .9 of the time, he doesn't even want, it, want the shop's names mentioned. Uh, so these weren't supplied by Tsunami. I'm not affiliated with anybody. And uh, I showed up at his house, and this is this is pretty funny. So in the back of his SUV, he had a bunch of igloo coolers. I don't know what was in it. His, his wife has a birthday celebration uh, t today, actually. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, what did you get, evicted? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to let that opportunity go, go to waste because uh, because he had stuff in the back of his car that could be, you know, if he got kicked out of the house, he stole the groceries out of the fridge. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's with all that being said, guys, for you guys that have made it this far, um, kind of a, I don't want to say a major announcement, but I finally found a good use of Patreon. And I, I'm starting to upload all my rough drafts directly to Patreon. So they're not edited. They don't have any of the annotations. There's some stuff that I'm in the, in the final drafts that I, I remove, whether it's me stuttering or using incorrect verbiage and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you get to see firsthand. Uh, so this video will be up on Patreon uh, ahead of the actual release to the public on YouTube. It's, they're, they're, t they're totally different videos. Sometimes they're longer on Patreon. Sometimes they're shorter because they're, they're not edited. So... For you guys, if you want to watch the videos there, they're going to have the same content, or I try to have them, you know, ha usually I'm not going to upload a rough draft if I'm going to scrap the whole thing. And at the same time, a lot of the rough drafts, like, I have another project going on, I have six other projects going on 
the rough drafts will be up on Patreon a lot of times before the final video is even put out because I have 12 different things I want to do with it and then I get sidetracked and pulled away, which in this case I was working on some Abu stuff, some Concept Z stuff, some Z3 stuff, some Power Pro Super Slick V2 stuff, some J Braid stuff, some other stuff. You know, it, it, it's okay, this takes precedence. I have, I have a weekend with these reels to play around with and tear down and, and give them back, you know, to my buddy. So I. I, I kind of have different stages of projects that aren't going to hit, you know, the public audience and I'll start uploading them on the back channel and Patreon and it's commercial free. So there's another advantage to you guys out there. My videos run long. I got to pay the bills. I'm not going to run ads on uh, the Patreon videos. So it's with all that being said, uh, thanks guys for you guys coming out here and checking this video out. Let me know down below what you guys think. Uh, is this a reel that you're going to use? I, I, for me personally, no. I want to know what you guys think, though. And again, this isn't a review. This is just a bench top fondle and <laughs> apparently freeze. And uh, until next time, guys, tight lines, and I'll see you soon.